Hey, Shalom, giving all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem, Rakaha Kodash. Double honor to the elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. A sincere Shalom, La Bakarium, Shah, Yasha Allah. That's peace of the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Now, this is, um, we're looking at the Scott Ritter right there in the middle. And this is, um, Off Grid Desert Farming. This is the name of the channel. You got Paul and um, Real Truth Talk. That's at the top in your uh, right hand corner, the top box, and at the bottom right hand, that's Paul. You know, this is his channel off Red Desert Farming. So it's a special live report. It's going on live. I'm about uh, 12 minutes in, you know, and Paul Ritter. You know, he brings up some um, some good points. Just a little background on who Paul Ritter is. You know, this guy's, uh, um, he's an American author, a former United States Marine Corps intelligence officer, a former United Nations Special Commission weapons inspector. Okay, so this guy, he knows what's going on. He's about, he's in his 60s, mid 60s, and he's been around. You know, um, he's also a convicted child sex offender, <laughs> you know, now, <clears throat> you know, to what fact check got to say about that is, you know, he said the government came after him, but he served about 2.5 years for those charges. So they got to put that on his badge. He got to wear that, you know, so um, Esau going to be Esau. <laughs> At the end of the day, but nevertheless, he's still speaking truth. Now I want y'all to listen to what uh, this guy got to say. Now, with everything that he knows and the knowledge that he has, did you hear his background? He's been in this for a, a, a long time, you know. And now he's a analyst. He has a YouTube channel, also. He's an analyst on this uh, Ukraine war, man. He's watching this thing step by step. He still doesn't believe that nuclear war is going to happen anytime soon you know at least he hopes not but he's sweating he's sweating you can see the sweat on his forehead right now and you know paul and the other guy over there they sweating too because we coming down to the wire let me just read this scripture here that's why it's uh it's, it's, it's best to stay in this book because the lord give us the eyes to see and we're diligently measuring the time this is um Revelations 11 and 14. The second woe is past. Matter of fact, before I read that, let me go to Revelations uh, 8. It's Revelations 8, verse 13. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven. This is John now. Saying with a loud voice, woe, woe, woe. That's three woes. Woe, World War I, Woe, World War II, and Woe, which is the final Woe, World War Three. There's not a fourth Woe here. Because of upon World War Three, our Lord Yahweh shows up to the inhabitants of the earth by the reason of the voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which were yet to sound. Now, when you jump over here to the ninth chapter, okay, this is of Revelation 9, verse 12. One war was passed. World War II, that was what, around, it was, so like around 1917, right? So one war was passed, and behold, there cometh two more woes. Now, this is the ninth chapter. Now, ninth chapter details World War I. Then World War II came about, uh, you know, they, they give the, the point of uh, 1945. We're just going to stick right there. You know, but we know the years leading up to these uh, climax points of these wars is what we're trying to get to. So we got two woes that was down. And now we jump over to Revelations 11, verse 14, which says the second woe. Now the second woe is passed. So you got the first woe that happened, the second woe that happened. Now we're upon the third woe. Remember, there's no four woes. It's only three, three major wars that was depicted in the scriptures. Now, these are tokens. These wars 
were left in the Bible for the men of the Lord so that we can find our way through the history leading up to the second coming of our Lord and our release date. So the second woe is past. And behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And that's what we're seeing right now. This is what they don't know. Paul don't know. This. These are all Christians here. Okay. They don't know the prophecies. They don't know what's going on. They don't know that the second coming of Yahweh is at hand. They don't know that they all could be Edomites. They, you know, from the look of it, we're just going to say that they're Edomites. You know, Paul is a little iffy, who knows, but they, these are Edomites. So this is their kingdom. So to see this fall and see their power structure fall, it's like, who's next? They're not comfortable with this. They, they have kids, grandkids, you know, cousins, aunties, uncles. They like the feeling of being in charge and ruling the world. So that's why the, the men of the Lord, the Israelites, when we come on the scene and we break it down, the prophecy in Daniel 2, Daniel 7, Revelation 13, Jeremiah, it scares them because they're no longer in charge. But I want you to listen to this here because they know America is no longer the world superpower. You can hang that up. Russia has taken the superpower seat now they're not going to tell you Americans this here Because they don't want to scare you But it's the reason why the Lord has switched the power to the bear Okay, who's Og in the scriptures Because those nuclear bombs from Og It's going to be shot off over here real soon There's a reason why they just spotted um, some, some China Chinese warships In the Alaskan territory Which is... Um, the U.S. water space, man. It was four of them. So you got to say, damn, China's moving bold. They just interrupted international space. You know, they basically floating in space. They're not supposed to be in, according to America. That's a bold move because Russia is backing them. Russia's in the power seat now. But let's check out what uh, Scott got to say. It deterred NATO. I just told you how. Poland said they were going to put air defense systems in the west of Ukraine. Russia said, no, you're not. <laughs> and, and NATO went, oh, yeah, you're right, we're not. And now NATO is thinking to put F-16s in Romania and Polish airfields. And Russia said, don't launch them against us, because we'll kill you. And NATO went, oh, okay, we don't want to die. Russia's already deterred. Russia's the superior military power. So you, um, so you hear that? So the Lord has switched everything. So Russia now is the superior military power that's why these nations you know like as i'm speaking there's four chinese warships over here violating america's uh uh uh, uh ocean space a very bold move and when you send those ships out like that it costs a lot of money a lot of fuel so something big is brewing and these people scott really they know it they know it that's why they getting prepared and paul's a major prepper but this is um, this is uh, Ezekiel 38, verse 1, NLT. This is another message that came to me from Yahweh, right? Son of man, this is uh, the, the, the Spirit of the Lord speaking to Ezekiel. Son of man, turn and face Og, which is Russia today. That's Og. Of the land of Og. The prince who rules over the nations. So all the nations, that's why BRICS is getting bigger and bigger. They jumping in BRICS because they see Russia is running the whole BRIC situation. Well, that's how the elites are setting it up. So it looks like in their new world order, Russia going to be the new America, man. The new muscle, the new might. So it says, the prince who rules over the nations of Meshach and Tabal and prophesy against her. And that's the whole thing with... The Ukraine war is to unite that old Soviet Union. You know, take care of your territory. You know, NATO is going to be on board with Og and Magog towards the end. And everybody going to make a move on this place here. So it's a reason why the Lord has switched the power from America to Russia. Let me see if we can get, get that again. And Russia said, don't launch them against us. Defense systems in the West to Ukraine. Russia said, no, you're not. <laughs> and, and NATO went, oh yeah, you're right, we're not. And now NATO is thinking to put F-16s in Romanian and Polish airfields. And Russia said, don't launch them against us, because we'll kill you. 
NATO went, oh, okay, we don't want to die. Russia's already deterred. Russia's the superior military power. Um, you know, NATO may look in, be looking for other ways to support Ukraine that will be deemed provocative, but NATO is not going to do anything that existentially threatens Russia because that is one of the triggers for nuclear conflict. Um, you know, we can sit here and hypothesize about, you know, where Russia would straight. It doesn't matter. Once a nuclear weapon is used, it's all over. One, there's no such thing as a limited nuclear war. We need to eliminate the concept of, an, of a limited nuclear war. We eliminate and need to stop uh, speculating about where the first Russian tactical nuke would hit. It doesn't matter. Because once a nuclear weapon is used, all, all nuclear weapons will be used, and we all will die. Um, now, now, part of that that's is true. And part of that is an incorrect statement, so they don't know the prophecies. Now, all those weapons will be shot. <laughs> yeah, you, you're right about that. But we all dying, that you're incorrect. That's why these scriptures are put together like this. This is um, this is uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16, right? Let me see. And, and as you can see, the title there says, The Coming of the Lord. See, they don't know. This is all the part of the coming of Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. So all those weapons will be shot from everywhere. Here, a great amount. But everybody's not going to die. That's the whole thing about salvation. Being saved is being saved from this hell of nuclear fire that's coming. Now these guys are going to be swept up in it. They write about that. Them and their bunkers and all they prepping food. But we hoping for salvation. We fighting for a ride in that chariot. That's what this whole thing about these UFOs are happening. These are the vehicles of salvation, man. You know? Um, when uh, when Elijah was being the militia sort of he said the chariots of, the, uh, 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 I think he's, if I'm not mistaken, he said the um, the vehicles of salvation or the chariots of, of my Lord. I forget, we've got to go back to, um, that's in, um, I think that's in Second Kings. Matter of fact, let me just check that out. Let me, let me see if we can get that one. That's um, Second Kings. Second Kings 2. And verse 11 and it came to pass as they still went on this is Elijah and Elisha they talked and behold there appeared a chariot of fire who the world would call the UFOs the lights looked like fire they had a movie back in the day it was called fire in the sky when I forget the guy's name he was supposedly beamed up I believe that you know he was taken up and they whooped on him and, and brought him back down it's a true story you know, they made a movie out of it. It was called Fire in the Sky. So, uh, Elisha and Elijah, they saw the chariot that appeared like fire. And horse, horses of fire. Which it, the horses represent the power, the horsepower. And parted them both asunder. Why? Because a beam came down. So, a beam hit Elijah. And it didn't hit Elisha. And it says, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven that's what's going to happen to the elect we're looking for this see our hope stands in these scriptures here they have no hope they hopelessly lost their hope is that they prepped enough they got enough toilet paper enough tissue enough water see this is where our hope at right here this same beaming up process that happened to our forefather elijah is going to happen to the hopeful elect so it says and elijah went up in a whirlwind into heaven and Elisha saw it and he cried, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel. Okay, that's what he said. So he said, the vehicles of Israel, which are the vehicles of salvation. And it says, and the horsemen thereof, and he saw him no more. See that? So that's what we looking for. So back in um, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16, once again, the coming of the Lord. It says, but I would not have you ignorant brethren concerning them that sleep these are you got elect people that's already in the spiritual world that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope and these people that you're looking at they're hopeless man they're scared 
They sweating. They scared. They they watching this night and day. There's nothing more important to them to them than this here because they know it's happening here now in their lifetime. But they have no hope like this. This is this is based on faith. Lord ain't giving out faith like a candy bar, man. That only goes to the elect, and that faith is for protection. It's a gift. It says, For if we believe that Yahweh Shah died and rose again, you gotta have that belief. It starts there. You know, people talking about the salvation, the coming of the Lord, but do you believe in the resurrection? Do you believe our Lord came back and then he departed in that same chariot that Elijah departed in? Do you believe that 2,000 years ago? That takes a great deal of faith, which is due to spirit. You can't make yourself believe that. <clears throat> it says, for if we believe that Yahweh shall die and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Yahweh will Yahweh bring with them. For this we say unto you by the word of Yahweh, that we which are alive and remain, so that's us now. We breathing, we eating, we gotta go to work. We believe this testimony, we holding close to this hope. So we alive, we were, we're here. They're here too. Scott Ritter's right here in front of you. But these are the hopeless people you're looking at. You're looking at the hopeless. But we've been given a gift that's beyond this world, Akim Akwaf, that you hold close to, because that's a weapon. They don't have that weapon. Neither can they attain it. It says, For this we say unto you by the word of Yahweh, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming <coughs> of Yahweh Shah shall not prevent them which, which do sleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. <coughs> you can go to Isaiah 63. For that, the day of vengeance is in my heart. And that's upon that seventh trumpet being blown that you read about in uh, Revelations 8, Revelation 16. That trumpet represents completion, meaning the time when these bombs will be used. The time when the bombs will be used and the salvation come at the same time. So it says, with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of Yahweh, and the dead in Yahweh shall will rise first. So those elected that sleep in the spiritual world, they go into their new bodies in the chariot first. Then we, we, the ones that sit in here, we hoping for this, man. We hoping for this. If not, we're going to roast with these fools, man. You're going to receive that second death. But we holding on to this hope. We got nothing to lose, man. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, Scott. So this is our hope. No, we don't all die. You die. Paul die. Real truth talk die. Your families die. But we holding on to this hope right here. That we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Just like Elijah was. The clouds are talking about the chariots, man, that's in the sky. That's hovering over planet Earth right now. Why don't you come out? Want the Pentagon come out and tell you what's really happening in the skies? While you out partying and enjoying your summer, you got all kind of UFOs and action going on in space right over your head. So many sightings of of, of different apparitions and in space, sitting on the sun, sitting next to the moon, and they, and they trying to ignore it like none of this is happening. This is happening because the salvation is here. Why do you think we inching closer and closer to the third world? So it says, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. You're going to have to go up because everything down here is about to shake. The Lord is about to shake this place, man. He's about to shake planet Earth with these bombs. And they know it. Paul speculating in the next few months is going to be all hell breaking loose with the bombs. But before the bombs come, we must receive the, what? We must see the M-O-T-B, the mark of the beast on the scene. That prophecy got to come into the earth. So we see the technology is here. It's not like people not walking around with that device in their skin. The last count that they're giving is 50,000 people 
on planet Earth is walking around with that uh, 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 radio, R radio frequency identification tag in their hand, and they live in their life with it, their best life too, as they show. And now with this uh, universal basic income that they're going to put in that device, they're going to take it. So before the nuclear bombs fly, we got a few more prophecies that's going to take place leading up to the third world's war. So while they scared, they're looking at the bombs, they're not looking at the mark of the beast that's on the scene. So all these men you're seeing, they're going to take it. And they're going to take it out of fear, of course, and out of desperation, the hour of temptation. But once again, we stay with the prophecies. They don't know what the mark of the beast is. Paul was lying to the people that the, 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 the Vanessa, right? The sticky icky was the mark of the beast. The juice, the beetle juice was the mark. Paul is a false prophet. That wasn't the mark of the beast. The Lord said without it, you won't be able to buy or sell. You got people that took it, was buying and selling, didn't take it, was buying and selling, man. So that wasn't the fulfillment of that prophecy, okay? So, but when these bombs do fly off, all hope lies in this. It says, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So that's our hope, Scott. Russia would like to make to the West. And because once a nuclear weapon is used, all, all nuclear weapons will be used and we all all die um and that's the point russia would like to make to the west and vladimir putin has said pretty much the same thing now he's talked about lowering the threshold of use etc um and sure a nuclear war will probably start with a um an exchange of tactical nuclear systems but it will immediately escalate into a general nuclear exchange using strategic nuclear systems putin has pretty much guaranteed that if one nuclear weapon strikes on russian soil russia launches everything and I can't imagine a scenario where Russia fires a nuclear weapon from Russian soil that strikes a uh, NATO target uh, in whatever NATO nation becomes the uh, unfortunate recipient of that, uh, that a retaliation with, you know, Russia's doing its best to de-emphasize. Meanwhile, the United States is doing its best to ensure that there is a nuclear war. Um, you know, we are talking about um, taking uh, 24 of the over 100 B-60.1 um, air-delivered nuclear weapons that we have stored in NATO um, off of storage status and put them into operational status, which means they're ready to be used at a moment's notice. Um, Russia's not going to sit back and just say, well, that's okay. Uh, that means that if, if we do this, any nuclear-capable aircraft, the F-35s, the F-16s that we have deployed in Europe that are spread out amongst a number of uh, air forces, anytime they take off, Russia has to assume that, that aircraft is now armed with a nuclear weapon. So basically, behind the scenes, Russia is calling shots. So Russia is telling America what to do, what not to do. Which means the elites, they're done with this experiment called the United States of America. Which means the Lord is done with the, <laughs> with the third part of man, which is the wicked, the Edomites, you see here. The Lord is about to fold up this prophecy once and for all. Aircraft carries out an aggressive profile uh, towards Russia. Russia may very well preempt by shooting it down over non-Russian airspace and launching a preemptive strike against the various uh, places where other nuclear weapons can be stored. Uh, this is just stupidity in the extreme. We also are talking about deploying in 2026 on a full-time basis um, intermediate-range nuclear-capable missiles into Europe. We're reintroducing the very missiles that created the crises um, in the 1980s that led to the implementation of the Intermediate Nuclear Forces Treaty that got rid of these weapons, that was the treaty that I was involved in uh, in implementing. Uh, we're now bringing those weapons back to Europe. We've gone back to square one. And I've said this, you know, like, sometimes I say things and people smile and they go, that's cute, Scott. That's really cute. That's clever. And I've said before, I said people, when they meet me, should uh, shake my hand and buy me a beer. Because if it weren't for me and the other inspectors, you'd be dead. And they all go, And that's not oh, that's true, and it wasn't for the Heavenly Father you be dead. The, the Lord gives the authorization, not Scott. You know, that's the, just the arrogancy of an Edomite once again, you know. Um, but he's making some great points. This is uh, 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 Deuteronomy 
32 and uh, 39 says, See now that I, even I, am he, and there's no God with me. I kill. See that, Scott? You know, now you might have, <laughs> you're in this, you're in this specter, man. You know, don't think too highly of yourself. You know, convicted uh, child sex offender, man. You know, and the Lord about to wipe that funny looking smile, you know, off your face and the rest of you. And these are average level Edomites, man. These are, that's why he said, give me a bit. These are six pack Joes, man. They don't fully know what's going on. Their information is limited. They don't see behind the curtain, but we do. See now that I, even I am he, and there's no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah does all his thing. Who's about to do all his killing? It ain't going to be Putin. Well, it's going to be him physically. But the father said, things shall come into his mind, man. Let me get that real quick. This is, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, Ezekiel 38, verse 10, NLT. This is what the sovereign Lord says. At that time, evil thoughts will come into your mind. This is Og. Who's going to put them thoughts there? Proverbs 21 and 1. The Heavenly Father is going to put them thoughts into Putin's mind. Basically, it's time to get busy. So Russia don't get busy until the Lord put them thoughts into his mind. And you will devise a wicked scheme. And that's going to be to get these arrows right here that we're about to read ready, man. The Lord said a sword is being sharpened. This is Jeremiah 51 and 3. We're going to end out right here, you know. Uh, against him that beneath, let the archer bend his bow. You know, so you got the arrow itself, which is the missile. You know, the bow, which is the silos. You know, don't forget those nuclear submarines, which ain't no joke. Okay? So the Lord about to bend, bend that bow against him that beneath. Bend it, lift it up, himself up in his uh, burgundine. And spare ye not her young men, because this bomb's going to destroy everything. Children, maids, destroy ye utterly all her hosts. Thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans. This is the modern day Chaldeans, this place here. And they that are thrust through in her streets. For Israel also, Israel, but the people first, and the land is going to be attacked, have not been forsaken, nor Judah of his power. You know, and that's the elect of the Lord of hosts. Though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel, flee out of the midst of Babylon. Today, America's modern day Babylon, and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of Yahweh's vengeance. For what? For touching the Lord's people, man. The Lord's got a payback for slavery and the slain of the saints and the prophets in his place. The Lord hath not forgotten about the 400 years of pain. What about the, the 200 years, what well, about 100, 150 years of pain for the 10 tribes that had to go through it before the other three tribes were brought here, man? All the tribes suffered here under the hand of these damn Edomites. So now is the time of the Lord's vengeance, right? It says, he will render unto her a recompense, which is a payback. Right? Shalom, a payback to you, man. Babylon have been a golden cup. That's you, America. At one time you was golden. Now Russia giving you orders. Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the world drunken. And you did. Everybody wanted to be in America. You got some, some people called the dreamers in South America dreaming to come to this place, man. Now look at your dollar. Now look at your men. Now look at your women. Right now, look at your economy. Look at your military. Now Russia is giving you orders. China telling you what to do behind the scenes, man. Everybody's scared here. 
So you have been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the world drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Now all the nations eat your guts, Esau. Nobody want to be around you. They can't make a buck off you, so you're basically no good. And the nations, they want a piece of your ass too. It says Babylon is suddenly falling. So this is happening out of nowhere. Some people can't believe what's going on in 2024. You heard your damn President Joe Biden yesterday. He called uh, Zelensky Putin, man. This is a disgrace. Babylon is suddenly falling and destroyed, completely destroyed with those arrows. How for her? Take balm for her pain. You know, balm is a, it's a healing ointment. Right? That you try to put on a wound to heal it. So the Lord said, try to try to heal this place. If so, she can be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she can't be healed. So there's no turning back now. You know, the Lord about to set his kingdom up on the top. The Lord's mountain is going to reach to the top now. Now you Edomites are going to be removed. Russia is going to be removed too. The Lord is removing all you kingdoms right now. And it says... But she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go. Everyone into his own country. That's the other nations leaving you. For her judgment has reached unto heaven. That's why these UFOs are here. For strict judgment on all you Edomites. Your time of ruling as the second beast, the second Rome is over. Now it's time for us to rule. Under our Lord, Yahweh HaMashiach. The Lord Yahweh Shah is coming back. And he's a dark skinned man. And he's furious about the condition of this world. Look at this world, man. The water's destroyed. The food. You got rubber food. All the damn food come from China. BJ's, Costco's. There's no vegetables. The earth is not producing. The fish is beaching themselves. You got creatures created in the laboratory. You can't get sleep at night. The energy system is messed up here. You're drinking water out of a damn plastic bottle, man. Then you take the plastic and dump it in the ocean. You've destroyed this place, Esau. You've been a terrible ruler, but you've been a perfect ruler too. Because the Lord knew to give you the earth last. Because you will leave it in this condition. And if the Lord don't cut this short, no flesh should be saved. Not even your own ass, dummy. That's why the Lord got to come and remove you, man. So it says... Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. Battery low. I'm in. It says... But she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go everyone to his own country. For her judgment reacheth unto heaven and is lift up to the sky. So the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, is about to bring this place down. We at the end. Russia is now giving America orders, telling her what to do, where to go, where not to go. We're in a serious time of a switch, man. And no, the bricks ain't ruling next. Our Lord Yahweh has next. Giving all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakah Double honor to the elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. Shalom.